Christian's outstanding. He'll be the number one draft choice in the NBA as a senior. And the guy they're really raving about around here is a 6'8 sophomore, Grant Hill, who Mike Krzyzewski says flatly could be the greatest one day to ever wear the blue and white. Well, Grant is, is, is an asset is his versatility. He can play baseline. He also can be a six foot eight point guard. But the one weakness so far that he hasn't proven, can he hit from three point land? The Soviets are a very young team, unlike the one that won Olympic gold in Seoul in 88. Igor Grachev is their best player, a 19 year old who hit 60% three point shots. But overall, this is not the big caliber Soviet team we're used to. No, this is a young team. They're more mobile. Uh, I doubt whether they'll make the Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. They'll find out a lot more today about how good they are, the Soviet team, when they go against the Blue Devils in Cameron Indoor Stadium, where Duke did not lose last season. Looking at the starting lineups, first for the Soviet Union, that's Grachev, the sharpshooter. Krzyzewski says he can't take a bag shot because he can make anything, even with people in his face. Antipop runs the whole show. Up front, they have Kondatov and Gresham, really spear carriers, role players. Mikhail, Mikhailov is their big man, good rebounder, very aggressive player. And there's yes. their coach, yes. Vladimir Sinman. And for the Duke Blue Devils, loaded at every position. All-America candidate Bobby Hurley working at the point. Grant Hill will start in the back line with him today. He's a swing man. The senior co-captains up front, Christian Leitner and Brian Davis, and the center, and you've got to watch this guy. He was the number one big man. Many felt the best player in high school basketball last season from Huntington Beach, California, Cherokee Parks, starting for the defending national champions as a freshman. That's how good he is. And there is Coach K. There's none better. Coach K looks a little bit tired, Don. One of the things that a coach defending the national championship got to remember, he has to, when it gets to the season, get back to taking care of homework. Forget about going out and speaking. Forget about the endorsements and so forth. You can get physically and mentally wore out. Soviet team went against North Carolina. Beaten by the Tar Heels as Grant Hill takes it right to the basket to open the game. The officials for today's game are Ed Hightower, John Morrow, and Don Ferguson. Anti Pop stood right in up there, took the charge. Two shot foul. Grant Hill goes to the free throw line. You talk about a guy with the whole package. He was valedictorian of his high school class. His dad, of course, is the great former cowboy, Calvin Hill, the Yale All American. How about his mother, Don? His mother is a very important person in the Bush administration in Washington. Graduate of Wellesley. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So Grant Hill gives the Blue Devils the first points of the game. Here is Igor Gracia. He'll throw it up from anywhere, and he'll stick it from anywhere. They get the ball down low. That goes to Bobby Hurley on the run. The lead is intercepted. Taken away by Antipoff, the point guard. Nice pass. And nice Look. takeaway by Grant Hill. Here comes Hurley again, three on three. Hurley this time dishes to David. Pro pass by Bobby Hurley. Hurley, who was voted to the all-final four team, he had 43 assists in the NCAA tournament, just 10 turnovers. Played his greatest games when it counted most as now the driving shot by Antipov is banked in. Played it off the glass, he kissed it. You have to call that one. Well, he's six foot three and that was six for 11. Christian Lake is covering him, good hit. Duke's coach Mike Krzyzewski allows a lot of latitude and offense, a lot of freelance. When the shot clock gets down, they'll work plays as Brian Davis drives and loops it down. And the Blue Devils have taken a 6-2 lead. Pay attention now to Blue Devils defense. That's what they're famous for. Belly button to belly button out there. They overplay the wings. The back door is open, but I don't think the Soviet team can handle the back door move. That's right, Al. That's what the Duke success story is built around. Great defense. Well, they overplay the uh, outlet lanes. Overplay the wings, pick you up at half court. The only one that gives him a lot of trouble, Don. Well, here's, here's back to the play. Watch him kiss the glass. 
No, Christian got a, uh, got a touch of that one that time. Foul call on Hurley, first foul of the game. Free throw is good, and that makes it 6-3. to three. Anapov, the point guard, now with all four of the Soviet points. A 6-2 game. Down low to Cherokee Parks. He looks a lot like Christian Leitner. Well, the Chief got good position that side and the inside, and Brian Davis looped the ball into him. The sixth man, one of the best in basketball, the Duke student body, picking up the champ. As the Soviets try to penetrate, Hurley slaps the ball away. They kick out, and this is Gracia, who can't get it to go, but the follow-up is up and down by Mikhailov. It's an 8-6 game. Antipop, the point guard for the Soviet team, will not pick up his dribble. So he kept his dribble alive the last time. Here he is again. He'll try to throw the ball up. He always throws the ball up ahead. Leitner at 6'11", 245 pounds, sprinting down court after his missed shot, trying to break up the play, but they call Leitner for a foul. It was a good pass and a good foul. What happened is the man inside slowed down, then Leitner got caught in his back like you're riding a, a Bronco there. Well, good call by the Zebra. As Coach K was saying yesterday, this team is almost too competitive, this Duke team. He's got to tone him down in practice. They want to play the Final Four this week. Well, they step by even, step. Can't even dream of the final four yet. First got to get ready for the season, then they got to uh, hope to win the ACC, then win the ACC postseason conference tournament, then one NCAA game at a time, Don. There's six of them, and, they, and to get to the promised land in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the first week of April is a long, long shot. The shot by Gracia. This is the man who on this tour is hitting 60% of his three-point shots. The 19-year-old, he is the Soviet's best player from Moscow. And it's the 9-8 game on the three. The Soviets have taken the lead. Hurley, freed up for the three-point shot. Should be good. You give ball to Hurley. That shot, face it up. He'll bottom it out. New coaches all saying that Hurley who is maybe the best point guard defender in the league, has greatly improved his shooting, his range, and his percentages. And now the Soviet strike has popping from the outside is Sergei Goreshin. And again, the Soviet team has a one-point lead. Duke has to extend their defense. Three of the Soviet players will always spot up in three-point land. Early short on the three-point attempt. Anapov searching out the open man. They send the cutters through, and they get it down to Gracia. Three-point hit by the Soviet Union. That one by Kandarov. They move ahead, 15 to 11. You can't let them shoot from three-point land. Europeans are outstanding from out there. Got to extend their defense, too. Soviets playing man-to-man, -man, Duke playing man-to-man. -man. Early on the drive, then looks to dish to Parks, and the ball is tipped away, and at the top of the key, Grant Hill works with it. They'll always play in front of Christian Leitner. Ball gets away from the freshman Cherokee Parks. Inbounds to the Soviets, who have the game's biggest lead, 15 to 11. Duke will pick up at half court. Watch Bobby pick up right there. Everyone overplays. Oh, <laughs> challenging Mikhailov, and they call a jump ball. <laughs> Could have went either way, but at the end, <laughs> gave him a shoulder in there. 15.52 to go in the first half, and the underdog Soviets have moved out to a four-point lead. If you're looking for a way to beat those old car blues, your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. Now's the right time for year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks, like the versatile Isuzu Trooper LS, priced at up to $1,800 off during the Isuzu for You sale. Info stylist, pick up Trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. The Isuzu for you sale ends soon at your local Isuzu dealer. Start it. Start it. Start it. Start it. Start it. Look for the 
stars, and you'll find... Oh, Dave Thomas travels the world over looking for new foods for Wendy's. But if it's eat. Excuse me, is this what I ordered? Tonight we feast, but first, we dance! <laughs> and it's not easy. Boy, I sure could go for a big Dave's Deluxe. Eats back a big quarter pound of fresh beef, cheese, three strips of bacon, sautéed onions. The works only at Wendy's. Which way to El Habib or El Habib? Come in for another Big Dave's Deluxe today. The power of a resource essential to all. At GTE, we provide that power with telephone systems and services central to the life of a community, the well-being of families, the needs of every business, great or small. GTE Telephone Services. We give you the power to flourish in any environment. At GTE, the power is on. This Olympic Showcase is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. By Visa, official card and traveler's check of the 1992 Olympic Games. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. By Radio Shack, America's technology store, nobody compares. And by the Olympics Triple Cast, a whole new way to see the games. With Coach Al McGuire, this is Don Crickey back at Duke University, the Soviet Union. Sharp shooting from the outside. Three of four three-pointers they've hit have taken a 15 to 11 lead. And now Mikhailov driving to the basket, and the rebound by Leitner is knocked away, and the Soviets keep the ball. They'll always have two or three men standing out there in three-point land. A drop step. Gresham uses a drop step, that time he charged. What he tries to do, he puts the ball up in the glass, not really trying to make the shot, but then charging the offensive rebound and putting it back up again. You'll catch that a few times in this game. That's Gresham. Hurley with the loop lead down low to Grant Hill. The loose ball picked up by Parks and tipped up. And Gresham knocking people around comes down the rebound. Line lead pass from Athlon. Soviets can't hit it. Leitner leads. Quick outlet to Hurley. Shashevsky says this is a faster Duke team than we had last season, and that's been evident so far. And then playing that thoroughbred racehorse game. Well, they're pushing. What they're trying to do for the All second the half is wear out the point guard from the Soviet team. Now watch this uh, this move here with Grant Hill. He readjusts in the air. Will end up going to the foul line for two shots. But what, the, what Duke is trying to do, and Coach K, is to wear out Antipop. He's the key. Cut off the head, the body dies, and he's definitely the, the quarterback of the Soviet team. Grant Hill at the free throw line. Coach Krzyzewski assessing him as saying there's almost no limits to where he can go. The only thing that he doesn't have yet is the belief that he can be as good as we know he can be. Well, as I said at the top of the show, the only question mark on him is the three-point area um, percentage. Can, can he hit from out there? Everything else is in place. At the free throws, Van Hill brings the Blue Devils back to within two. Possession arrow points to Duke on the tie-up. Mikhailo and Gresham, two tough inside players. One quarter, swing down low, try to hit a man down low in the box. Early's entry pass is knocked away. Rachia driving high to the basket. Grant Hill got the ball, but he was stepping on the baseline of the court. So the Soviets will bring it in with 14.46 to play in the first half. Well, what happened that time, Grant Hill was out of bounds. So was the last place that you, that you, uh, that you touched. So he came back in bounds, but the last place he touched was out of bounds. So it is the Soviet score. Duke opens its regular NCAA season on Monday night against East Carolina. A lot of people forget, Al, that last year, Duke's first uh, ACC game, they were beaten in rather badly by Virginia. And they took their worst loss of the season, the final game they played before the tournament. They were blown out by North Carolina by 22 in the ACC tournament final. What I liked about that game, I was there, 
When they lost by 22 to their arch rival down the road about 10 miles here, Chapel Hill, Coach K would not take his starting team out. And after losing by 22, now the starting team listened when they went to the NCAA. I thought that was the problem with UNLV last year. They had no close games, and the ball players thought they could win whenever the pressure came. But they had no pressure all year. And as soon as Duke put pressure on them in Indianapolis in the semifinals, they collapsed. Fabulous play by Grant Hill, saving the ball. Hurley kicks out, and Davis strokes, and the Blue Devils have tied the game 15 all. Marty Clark, a sophomore, now on the floor for Duke. 6-6 Six -six swing there. And a pop on the drive. Rebound, Gresham contends for it. Inbounds to the Soviets. Hit the ball boards real strong. They're a tall team, but then they can't go to the bench with any authority. So come the second half, they will not be this quick. They'll end up getting lead in their legs. And I think by the second half, Duke will move out. The Soviet players well aware of who they're up against on this tour. They're out looking at the national championship trophy. Their coach, Vladimir Sinman, was exhorting him yesterday that this is their biggest challenge. As the two people come in now, Blakeney comes in to play in the backcourt. Kenny Blakeney, a sophomore who suited up for every game but never played a minute last season. He's a rare redshirt. He has four years of eligibility left. Rachev being hawked by Blakeney. And Bradov drives to the basket and banks in a shot. And again, the Soviet Union takes a two-point lead. What happens with European teams, they look first to shoot, second to shoot, third to shoot, then to pass. Leitner having trouble getting it to drop, but the Blue Devils maintain possession. Hurley with a quick dish, and then the ball is kicked back to him. Last touched by the Duke Blue Devils inbound to the Soviets. Leitner 0 for 3 shooting so far. Leitner can't seem to get into the flow of the game offensively because I think they're fronting them on the baseline. Leighton has to kind of roam a little bit more outside. I thought he would, playing along with uh, Cherokee uh, Parks and uh, so forth. Hurley pulls up off the break and gets the roll, and he ties the game at 17-all. Bobby Hurley with five points. Again, picking up the half court. Wear him down, wear him down. That was a charge, no doubt about it. Unbelievable quick foot movement by Bobby Hurley. His body has matured the last two years. He doesn't cry as, in, as, as much as he did in his freshman year. Good position. That's the second personal foul on Antipop. As Leitner sits down next to assistant coach Tommy Amaker. Well, 48 to play in the first half. Hurley looks for a penetrating lane and picks it off to Marty Clark. Here come the Soviets on a two-on-two -two break as the fish will be caught oh. by Anipov to Kondratov and... Showtime! He put that one between his legs that time. He must be watching films and tapes. Okay, said the Soviets told his team if they are not an assist team, they don't make each other better usually. Pretty much move the ball, they free it up for the outside shot. Going hard to the basket and the rebound is down to the Soviet Union. Anipov. Cherokee uh, Parks, who they say has great jumping explosion, and he demonstrates that they're going way up to get the defensive board. Parks in low pivot position, has the inside, should be automatic. Cherokee Parks, the number one rated big man in high school basketball last year, rejects Sergei Gresham. It was a little slow getting down court that time. He's fortunate to get away with that block. He almost gave the two points right back. Boy, this guy's a basketball playing son of a gun, isn't he? This Cherokee Parks. He looks like the real thing. This Christmas, Tandy Computers, some of the best-selling PC compatibles in America, are on sale at Radio Shack. Four complete systems with color monitors start at just $599.90. 
all come with 24 unique home organizer programs. The more powerful RLX system is the perfect home office machine. And with hard drive, it's just $11.99.95. The Tandy 1000 family of computers. So easy to use, we guarantee success. Radio Shack, America's technology store. This castle once had 26 bathrooms. It'd be nice if one of them still worked. Why? What if my diarrhea comes back? Relax. You took my Imodium AD caplets. Just once. I usually take the pink stuff two or three times. Imodium AD is much better. Imodium AD caplets are so effective, they often work in one dose. Instead of dose after dose after dose, like the pink stuff. Ready to go? Well, before the sun set. Imodium AD for diarrhea, the choice for one dose relief. This season, give the Olympics triple cast of the 92 Summer Games. Call 1-800-OLYMPIC, order the gold package and get a set of Olympic pins, a commemorative book, the 92 highlights tape, and two solid weeks of all the best events. Order now and get a free Olympic warm-up jacket. Give the Olympics triple cast. Catch the fire behind the flame. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a Die Hard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Who's going to back it better than Sears? Personnel, please. Seventh floor. Now, when life turns up the heat, there's Degree Antiperspirant. Because it's body heat activated, Degree turns on extra protection when you really need it. Degree. Your body heat turns it on. You've loved her for years, but now Sophia has to say goodbye. Welcome to heaven. I'm in heaven? A special Golden Girls you have to see to believe, tonight on NBC. Back at Cameron Indoor Stadium, home of the national champion Duke Blue Devils. Right now, they're tied up with the Soviet Union, 19 all. Soviets with the ball, their touring national team is 1-2. Antipov, the point guard. Can't get the jump shot to go, and Grant Hill loses the rebound. Back in bounds to the Soviets. Duke had good defensive rebound position that time, but Hill just couldn't find the handle. Olympic basketball will be a whole new ball game as far as the Soviet Union is concerned. Lithuania is going to send its own team, and three of the other republics could send theirs the Ukraine, Estonia, and Latvia, in addition to the Russian team. Depending on who qualifies, as Marty Clark is. Packed that by Antipov, and Sergei Antipov gets the foul, his second. Uh, I, oh, it's only his second. Good, I thought it was his third, because if they lose him, that's all she wrote. It's Curtin. That young gentleman is a ball player. Curly off the baseline of the floor. Almost gives the open shot to Blakeney. Open set play off the outbounds on the baseline. Krzyzewski and his team meeting yesterday pointing out how the Soviets use the international rules. Don't look very well at where the ball's coming in from on the inbounds play. They look at the man they're defending and there's going to be a lot of things open. He said we should score off inbounds plays. Famous high school, the Mafia. His coach there, Morgan Wooten, said he'll be able to stop any offensive guard standout in college basketball. Blakeney. After they score, he got one, two, two pressure up court. That's something new for Duke this year. Hawks taking Gracia out of his shooting range, picking out way outside the three-point line with 11-19 to go in the first half, and Duke leading by a point. Clark came out too fast that time. Young people out there, you can't come out that fast on an offensive man with the ball because he's going to go around you. Marty Clark goes out of the game. Christian Leitner's back in as... Duke a much bigger team than last season's. They have another standout freshman and Eric Meek, another 6'10 Californian, a high school All-American. You'll be seeing him before long. Next time down, they'll try to get Christian Leighton off the block, get him a basket down low. Rocha fires. Cherokee Park sweeps down the defensive rebound. Get the ball of Bobby Hurley, and everything's in the safe deposit box. Get it back to Bobby Hurley, it's back in the safe deposit box. <laughs> nice baseline move by Grant. Grant Hill, the ascending star, driving to the basket and giving Duke its biggest lead, 
Grant Hill has scored six points for Duke. With a head and shoulder fake, he ended up pulling his feet, making another walk. Here he comes to the baseline. Here comes Grant Hill. Keeps his eye up there. No emotion, all confidence. In the national championship game against Kansas, Hurley with the ball had nine assists and just one turnover. Well, he, well in that final, Don, he played the 80 minutes. Semifinals and finals. Never came out of the game. Man has a full tank. Oh, good hustle. Grant Hill. There's his dad, Calvin Hill. <laughs> Tremendous guy, Calvin, and he's got to be awfully proud of his son as the uh, Duke Blue Devils are now in a 9-0 run. Well, Calvin says his son is more focused when he plays. He doesn't get as emotionally involved as he used to get when he played. Here comes Hurley on a 10-man break. Lead to Hill. Off it goes to Blakey. Time for timeout. Duke at his very best, and Vladimir Sinman sees what the national champions are all about. As there's a timeout on the floor, and Duke has opened up the biggest lead of the game, a nine-point advantage. And the tomahawk. To support the U.S. Olympic team, the Visa Gold Medal Athlete Program puts sports science to work for America's Olympic hopefuls. How does an athlete know how fit he or she should be? Using a variety of sports science techniques, athletes can determine their exact body fat content. Under a coach's direction, an athlete can then adjust the level of body fat to improve performance. The Visa Gold Medal Athlete Program, helping the U.S. Olympic team measure up in Barcelona. This is Milan Henelicka, goaltender for the Czechoslovakian Olympic hockey team. He's taken hundreds of stitches, suffered eight fractures, and has even been knocked unconscious. Yet he once went 11 consecutive periods without being scored on. But if you think it's tough to get something by him, wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your Visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Now the excitement of real arcade basketball is yours in electronic hot shot basketball. Challenge yourself or an opponent in one of two dynamite games. Like who can bury the most hoops in 60 seconds? 55 points. Beat that, Hot Shot. Hot Shot is the only game with a motorized moving backboard. Yeah. Jumper off the rim. There's electronic game sounds and digital scoreboard. Time's running out. Three-pointer at the buzzer. Milton Bradley's electronic Hot Shot basketball. When you're hot, you're hot. 1874, the first transatlantic cable connecting Ireland and America. It was made by Siemens. That was then. This is now. Today, Siemens makes telephone switches that handle a million calls in a single hour, carry voice, text, and data on a single phone line. And at 23 research sites in America, the people of Siemens are developing technologies to connect us all to the future. Siemens. Precision thinking. Some things change. I got no complaint. Some things don't. And <laughs> you win big, you gotta win bigger. OJ goes one-on-one -on -one with Iron Mike Ditka, Sunday. Here's Bobby Hurley starting a fast break. Guards always get to know the court, gives you two options. Nice, beautiful lead pass up to Grand Hill, and he ends up having it finished for a deuce. Duke on an 11-0 run. Grand Hill of the Blue Devils, the leading scorer in the game, he has hit for eight. As Hurley hawks the ball. Gresham pulls up. Throws up a brick, and it comes off one of his teammates, and Duke gets the ball again. So after the Soviets took a 15-11 to 11 lead, Duke kicked in with its full-speed offense. As you see, the field goal shooting, Duke really upping its percentages now to 61%. Wearing them down a little bit, Don. Russians got to go back to the game. That's shooting from three-point land. Leitner low. He has the ball tipped away from him. And here comes Igor Gorachev. have gone cold, but now Gresham gets the loose ball lost by Davis, and he brings the Soviets back to within seven. Without Antipop out there, the Russians lose all their continuity. Now 
on the run is Alexander Chernoff in playing the point. Working in the middle as Turley tips it away, and Chernoff saves the ball with 8.45 to play. Here comes a solid man-to-man -man again. It never stops. Duke is in your face after the opening tip. And for 40 minutes, you had that all day or all night. Duke defense, the cornerstone of the franchise. Here comes Eric Meek, that other highly regarded freshman big man. He's from Escondido, California. He replaces the other freshman, Cherokee Parks. He had a serious automobile accident before the summer. Meek did. Yeah, hit by a drunk driver. He was jogging at the time. Not all the way back, but they're very pleased with his progress as Leitner drives hard to the bucket. Christian just broke the drought. He was 0 for 3. Now he's 1 for 4. Turnoff drives, has it tipped away. Duke attacking the ball. Anapoff back in, working out high. Sergey Gresham has it knocked away. And Grant Hill grabs the loose ball. He is submarined and fouled by the point guard, Antipov. That's his third. So the Soviets with a major problem. Their quarterback has three personal fouls. Foul is called against number five, Sergei And the Antipov. Soviets are already over the limit with eight, over eight minutes to play. His third personal, 17. Took a hard fall here. But he's okay. You know, I want to finish that story on, on me. Eric Meek. In June, Coach K called and didn't know how serious the um, accident was and so forth. And uh, he said, no matter what, Eric has a scholarship for four years at Duke. And I was speaking to his father yesterday, and that depressed the father so much. And he said, a lot of times in life, he says, you have second thoughts on something. We've never had second thoughts on our son coming to Duke. Yeah, his, father's sure in, his father's in the construction business. Soviets hit the shot to make it a seven-point game again, Duke. As Duke now runs his pattern off, and Hurley sees the open lane, rocks to the basket, banks it in, and he was fouled on the play. That's a big-time play there. He, he was flying under the radar here, which he has to because of his size. He clears out with his left hand. Yes, you should be frustrated. It is a foul, but the shot was so good and was so entertaining, we can't call a foul on that left-hand clear-out. But that was a excellent, excellent offensive move. You heard Hurley all right, with 10 points and three assists. Soviets have trouble handing the ball. Meek gets it up to Grant Hill on the drive to the basket. Oh, oh, oh. Grant got a little bit nervous up in the air that time. You're allowed to hold on if you think you're going to get injured. And there was a Soviet player underneath him. That's why he held on to the rim and no penalty for it. 12 point, Duke Lee. All the way. Albrecht driving. Not of Grant Hill vintage, but the end result was what they were looking for as he gets two and the Soviet Union's back to within 10. Down low to Leitner. Gets his own rebound and works his way for two as Leitner starts to come alive down low. Got a way to push off that time, Don. Leitner did. Oh. Now, what, watch what Hill does here as he flies in. He sees the opening. He knows now he's on thin ice. That move there. See, now he hangs on to the rim because he's afraid of getting hurt, which is right. And you're allowed to hold on to the rim to save an injury. And that's why there was no technical foul on holding on to the rim. Grant Hill started for the national champions as a freshman last season. And they, as we mentioned at the outset, have all been raving about how much better he is now. As Bobby Hurley gets a brief rest. He's not out of there long, usually. Marty Clark back in. Let's watch the score. Bobby went out. The score is 37-25 when he left. Let's see what happens. And now here's Hill going to play the point now. Grant Hill with Bobby Hurley out as Leitner gets it low to Clark. Meek gets it to Leitner. Basket goes, and Leitner was fouled. Thank you, Eric Meek. Big guy working hard. Gets two for Leitner. Maybe Good hustle three. down low. Can't find the ball. They watch them all go to the floor. Eric Meek stays with it. He stays down there. Hot potato. Flips it up to the super All-American. And that's all she wrote. 
Leitner, who was the ACC Athlete of the Year last season when he averaged 19.8 points for the national champions, is three for eight shooting today for six points. Now well, he's the cover baby. Every magazine that deals in college basketball has him on the cover. He has great shooting range, he's physical, he's a competitor, and he comes to play. Krzyzewski says he's one of the two best shooters. He said Hurley and Krzyzewski says Hurley and Leitner are the two best pure shooters he has this season. They both improve their range. The soldiers are having problems with Duke overplaying individually. That is a European move there. Looks bad. You know, a lot of times, gang out there, the European teams play at 6 and 12 straight up. American athletes play at 3 and 9, bent over. So we don't think they're any good. They are good. Now, this Soviet team, I don't think, will make the Olympics uh, because they're too young. I think the teams will make the Olympics in Barcelona, Spain in 92, but the host team automatically makes it, which would be Spain. Italy will make it. Yugoslavia won't make it because there'll be three countries by then. I would say Lithuania makes it, probably Greece, and um, I don't know who else. Um, the only thoroughbred would be um, Spain because they're playing on their own blacktop. <laughs> they're playing at home. Eric Nick now at the free throw line. Average 32 points a game for his high school team. Zan Pasquale in Escondido. He didn't have a nice smooth stroke that time. A little fidgety. Maybe that's his style. I didn't watch him shoot fouls the other day. Got to smooth it out a little bit. He jumps around a little bit too much just before he shoots. It's a mature looking freshman. <laughs> that's not a freshman's body. <laughs> I'll tell you that. NBA body. <laughs> 40 to 27 Duke. Tough. He's a player. He's tough. He is a. He's a player. There's three point land. Thank you. Mr. Leitner starts to heat up and extends Duke's lead to 43 to 29. Leitner now with 10 points after a slow start. Blatant foul by the Soviets. They just knocked Hurley down. Guy stuck a knee out and caught him in the thigh. It, it is a nice block out there. Now watch him come over and catch ball. Christian's a quick jump. He doesn't have the coil to go up. Christian, you know where he got that name? His mother gave him that name because she um, liked an actor in a picture called The Young Lions in 1958. Marlon Brando played the part. That's right. And that's where he got the name Christian. Bobby Early. And she said, you always worry about when you give a kid a name like that, he'll end up in jail. No, this guy won't this end guy. up in jail. <laughs> His brother will stop me. He has a brother named Christopher, Chris, Chris, Christopher and he is a professional uh, baseball uh, umpire. Right. That's a nice perspective on balls and strikes if he's this big. <laughs> you know the story on Bobby Hurley, played for his dad, Bob Hurley, at the famed St. Anthony's High School in Jersey City. Early senior year, they were 32-0, national champions, USA Today's number one team. Leitner starts to drive the lane, and again, the Soviets guilty of a takedown. You can't defend him, knock him down. That was a hesitant move. What's a hesitant move here? Hesitates. Now tries to move. Don't forget, this fellow 6'11". That was all knee. That was by Gresham. So yep. watch him put his knee in there. That's illegal. Plus it hurts. There's another angle on it. Gresham now has three fouls for the Soviets. He also has seven rebounds. He's the leader in, in the ball game in the rebounding department. They're looking at the arch now. Christian Leitner's right foot. Well, we probably won't see him back for the second half if um, the trainer just wants to take a look at it. He is putting way down at the well. That's good. As Leitner goes out to get a 10 and 2, and Duke leads by 15. D 
Steve Thomas travels the world over looking for new foods for Wendy's. Bon appétit. Excuse me, is this what I ordered? Tonight we feast, but first we dance! <laughs> and it's not easy. Boy, I sure could go for a big Dave's Deluxe. Eats back a big quarter pound of fresh beef, cheese, three strips of bacon, sautéed onions, the works, only at Wendy's. Which way to El Habib? Oh, El Habib. Hot chef. Come in for another big Dave's Deluxe today. If you're looking for a way to beat those old car blues, your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. It's the right time for year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks. Like the rugged Isuzu pickup, priced at up to $1,500 off during the Isuzu for you sale. Info stylist pickup trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. The Isuzu for you sale ends soon at your local Isuzu dealer. Here's an automotive tip from Walmart. Cars and budgets last longer when you pay attention to three things. How you drive, what you put into the engine, and where you go to buy it. That's why you should choose Quaker State. It's one tough motor oil. And every time you get it, get it at the Walmart price. It's always the low price. If you care about your car, you'll change your oil with Quaker State. If you care about your money, you'll change to the Walmart price. Always the low price. Always. The Dolphins, Dan Marino and company are back in the wild card hunt. The Bears, seeking their seventh divisional title in eight years. These two playoff contenders collide in venerable soldier feet. Shula, Ditka, the Miami Air Machine versus the Monsters of the Midway. Sunday. Concern on the Duke bench as Christian Leitner, their All-American, with an injured right foot, didn't appear to be too serious. We'll look again here, Al. Yeah, he has, he has to move right there. The knee comes in and he catches the foot. He immediately reaches down. I would most likely think that Christian uh, will come back out and play the second half. Getting some extra support on it. Leitner started out the day shooting one for six from the field, then hit his last three shots. He has ten points. Parton is at the free throw line for him. That's surprising that Coach K put Parks there. Probably give him confidence. I know he's a good foul shooter, but I think in the regular season he would put Bobby Hurley up there. Soviets having problems getting the ball up court as. Their man stepped on the inbounds line, Mikhailov, and it turns over to Duke with five minutes left to play in the first half, and the Blue Devils with their biggest lead, 45 to 29. Marty Clark down low to Parks. Nice turn. He is a nice looking. Has this guy got the goods or what? What a player. Nice Almost move. rejects at the other end. He can run the floor, Park. That's one of Leitner's strengths, his ability to get up and down. And Parks obviously can do it, too. As Danny Ferry brought along Christian Leitner. Christian Leitner will bring along Chief Park. I, I sometimes I think he's in that paint more than three seconds. But How did he get the name Cherokee? His mother liked it. No, I think on his dad's side, there's also uh, some uh, heritage of, of Indian. Cherokee Nation? I think so. I'm not sure. Also some basketball players back in the park's lineage. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, the great ones Big from one. New York City and the great black tops of the world. Davis down low to Cherokee Parks. His turnaround jumper doesn't go, and the rebound is taken down by Chernoff for the Soviet Union who tries to go in the end. They've done a good job defending Brachev, the man with the ball. He's the Soviet's best shooter, best player. Drives to Dish. And Brian Davis positions himself to take the charge. On those dishes, they'd be much better off if they bounce the dish in front uh, rather than pass it in. Krzyzewski said of Brian Davis, his overall contribution to our championship team last year was tremendous at both ends of the floor. Not a big score, average seven and a half points a game, but he defends and when it comes to running the break, this guy's down in about three leaping bounds. Well, he has enthusiasm, he's the holler guy on the team, and on top of that, he is the, he is the stopper. He is the uh, person that you put on the best offensive man. 
of the cover. After Hurley's miss, the Soviets try to get closer. Down by 14. Here's a whistle stopping play down low. Then the official wants a wet spot right up. Brian Davis is a senior from Capitol Heights, Maryland. Thank you. A lot of great ones coming out of that D.C. area. Grant Hill, for one, he's from Reston, Virginia, Northern Virginia. Well, he's, he's a takeoff on, on the great Billy King. Not as good defensively as Billy King was from yesteryear here, but can play good D. And the good D.L. of the Duke Blue Devils has really held Rochef down. Yeah, he's only gone one for five from three-point land, and there's no way they can stay in the game unless he moves those numbers up. Isn't he originally coming in here about 60% from there? From the three-point line, he's yeah. hitting 60%, which equates to 90% two-point shooting. Gresham is back in the game now, that combative pivot, pivot man. Throughout his 32 seasons in the NFL, Mike Ditka has produced that rare combination of great player and great coach. Now in his 10th year as the head man of the Chicago Bears, he's looking to capture his 7th divisional title in the last 8 years. O.J. Simpson talks with Mike Ditka tomorrow on NFL Live. We'll get into more on the schedule of the National Football League on NBC Sports tomorrow as the Soviet Union gets a roll and comes back to within 12. Coach K does not want to let the Soviet Union get back in the game. He told me yesterday that if he could beat him by 70, he'll beat him by 70. Yeah, he, he wants to run it up. He knows him for international play. As coming across the lane is Sergei Gresham for the one-hand push. He now has seven. Kondratov, who hit, hit on the previous trip down, leads the Soviets with 10. And they're back again to within 12. I think Coach K doesn't realize that the Cold War is over. <laughs> they surrendered, it's over. <laughs> These Soviets, one of the reasons they want to keep this tour going, they're eating so good here. Things are really tough in the Soviet Union. Virtually no supplies. It's sad. Benesov on the drive, and here comes Grant Hill the other way. Lead down low, and the roll goes, and Kenny Lakeney gets two and goes to the line for Duke. Got the assist from Grant Hill. Excellent pass here at the end. Watch Grant Hill catch Blakeney on the left there. Was fortunate the ball went in. He kissed it off the glass too low, and it cried in. It almost did a victory lap before it dropped. Sinman, the Soviet coach, he was really jumping on these guys yesterday. Maybe he does that every day. He's a fun guy away from the practice floor. One of the few can convey anything to you in English. Our Soviet L not that good. Our Russian, is it? No, no. I just kept nodding. I was looking for some of the Soviet pens that they give out. You seem to have gotten some. I did. I was there. You're the best at that. <laughs> You're the best. Here is the rebound taken down now as Christian Ast is in the game from Heidelberg, Germany. Early kicks it over, and Ryan Davis strokes long and doesn't get it to go. The rebound is taken down by the Soviets. Watch him keep it to the line. Chris Maravich moves. That'll give him one point for effort there, and it didn't go. Here's a block by Hurley on the big man, the 6'10 Fedosov. There goes Hurley to the floor. <laughs> Quite a piece of him. That was an excellent block by Bob. Nobody plays harder because you can't play harder. It took a few extra steps there. That reminded me of Pistol Pete Maravich. Now a big hand for Ron Burt, who's come in the game for the Duke Blue Devils. There's Ron. He's an engineering major and a walk-on. And he can play. Yeah, well, they had a tryout. 38 guys showed up, and that's the guy that made it. The last two years, he was on the intramural uh, championship team at Duke. Nice drive to the basket by Grachev, but again, the Soviets can't find the bucket. And the rebound comes back in on the out-of-bounds to the Duke Blue Devils with 1.19 to go in the first half. Here's Burke to walk on. He came to school here because of academics, and he wanted to watch good basketball. He plays pretty good in the open court. He's from Kansas City. 
Rebound knocked around. Christian asks. He was fouled, but he got no whistle, and now the save by Davis, and they're going to rule that he stepped down the baseline of the court. Soviets get the ball with 59 seconds to play in the half. Don Cricky with Al McGuire at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke against the Soviet national team. Al? 14-point spread. Could use a three-pointer here to stay in the game. But up and down by Andre Olbrecht. He has six. And the Soviets are back to within 12. Duke wants to spread out. I guess they're going for one shot. Half minute to go in the half. They are. This is absolutely an exhibition game, so. Soviets led early, 15 to 11. Duke went on an 11-0 run and has been in command since, now holding to a 12-point lead. Mike wants to use this as experience, just like it's a regular game. Too soon, they wave another three seconds. Soviets will get six seconds to get some off here, El. And they call timeout. They'll get a shot off. Plenty of time. Lifetime, six seconds. Time out, Soviet Union. If not a lifetime enough to launch something. Tomorrow's a doubleheader NFL day on NBC Sports. Most of you will see the AFC East leading Buffalo Bills take on Dick McPherson's exuberant New England Patriots. Others will see Kansas City at Cleveland, the LA Raiders play at Cincinnati, or Houston at Pittsburgh, all with playoff implications. Then in the second half of our doubleheader, many of you will see Dan Moreno and the Dolphins go against the Bears at Chicago. Or regional action, check your local listings. A doubleheader day tomorrow on NBC Sports. Happy Duke fans, getting at airtime. Hope that stuff comes off. It looked pretty bad at the Thanksgiving table with that on. Well, the band just got here. The band was at the football game. I think I think they lost to North Carolina. So now the band's here. I think we'll pick up the octave a few. Uh... The band getting double duty. Yeah, they, you know what? Next week they're going to uh, Japan. They're playing Clemson in Japan, and the band and the cheerleaders are going. Now that's nice. Plus 72 football student athletes. That's the way it should be done. The athletic departments are supposed to take care of the student athletes. Stop all this baloney licensing and money and all the backroom stuff. Come back to reality, sports. Well, they do it the right way here. Duke basketball wins with integrity is not a better program in America. He ate a turnover. 2-2-1 two, two, pressure. Soviets don't know enough to put a man in the middle of that zone and break it. Bobby Hurley comes back in now to apply some of that defensive pressure as Ron Burt gets another standing ovation. That play. I don't know what a foul is, and I think Hurley's wondering that also as he was knocked to the back. He looks at the official. <laughs> <laughs> You're mature now. First half hero so far is Grant Hill. So after a, a half of play, the Duke Blue Devils hold to a 51 to 39 lead. Now we're going to check out the college football day and the rest of the sports news as we go to New York where Gail Gardner is standing by. Gail? All right, thank you, Don. Coming up on the Prudential Update, we will take a closer look at some of the problems facing the basketball program in the USSR. We'll bring you our conversation with Dr. Philip Mayer. He's the physician who performed surgery on Lions offensive lineman Mike Utley. Utley suffered a spinal injury last Sunday, remains paralyzed from the chest down. And we'll preview week 13 in the NFL, including some words of wisdom from Bears head coach Mike Ditka. We'll get started right after these messages. Good luck up there today. I'll need it. What's wrong? What if my diarrhea comes back? Relax. You took my Imodium AD caplet. Just one dose. I usually take the pink stuff two or three times. Imodium AD is much better. Imodium AD caplets are so effective, they often work in one dose. Instead of dose after dose after dose, like the pink stuff. Hello? Hi, hon. 
I feel great. Imodium AD for diarrhea, the choice for one dose relief. Olympic glory used to depend on muscle, talent, and heart. Now you can add digital computer analysis, retinal scanners, and more. And that costs money. That's why every time you use your Visa card, money goes to help the U.S. Olympic team. So pull for the team and pull out your Visa card. Because at the Olympics, they don't take excuses. And they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. I've made up my mind. I'm gonna do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. My sister was three years older than me. Race you to the raft. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't quite beat her to the raft. Until that one day. I won, I won! I don't know if she let me win, but I'll never forget it. At at and we know every great athlete has been inspired by someone. As a proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team, we salute them all. Maybe I would have made it without my sister, but I doubt it. America's hottest music, the hottest comics. This ain't no video show, it's the real thing. Hot Country Nights premieres Sunday at 8, 7 central on NBC. And welcome back to our NBC studios in New York. Although we realize that football is often a violent sport, we are mostly used to reading the injury wire and seeing sprained knees, hip pointers, and thigh bruises. But once in a while, something happens that reminds us that some injuries can take an extraordinary toll. Such was the case last Sunday at the Silverdome in a game between the Lions and the Rams. Lions right guard Mike Utley lost his balance, pass blocking David Rocker of the Rams. He fell forward, landing on the top of his head and snapping it back. Utley has been left paralyzed from the chest down. Thursday at Detroit's Henry Ford Hospital, Dr. Philip Mayer performed four hours of surgery on Utley. Earlier today, we spoke with Dr. Mayer, who explained how such a serious injury happened. His head was bent backward. It means the chin was lifted up, the neck stretched backwards, and one of these discs ruptured, going backwards, striking the spinal cord and the ligament up in the front was torn. As the force continued to flex the neck backward, the back of the spinal column was then fractured. Can you explain to us, doctor, the extent of the paralysis? He can move his arms, but he cannot move his legs. He has good control over almost all the muscles of the arms. His hands are weak. He's called a quadriplegic, which means all four extremities are involved. Uh, he has feeling from just about the collarbone level upwards and no feeling below that. What's the best you can hope for for Mike in the next few months? He should be very independent in his life. Uh, this is a level of injury which should allow him to uh, be active in a wheelchair, driving a car, feeding himself, and caring for himself. I do not expect that he will actually walk, although he might be able to stand for some periods of time in appropriate bracing. But because the body is not actually able to hold himself up, and he's such a large person, he's not going to walk effectively. It would be too much energy to be used. How strenuous is the rehabilitation that we're talking about? In the beginning, particularly in the first two months, it's going to be very strenuous for him, both physically and psychologically. Uh, he actually has to learn to care for himself, his skin, his bodily functions. Uh, he has to work uh, with a handicap, which most of us can't begin to appreciate. And emotionally, he will have to come to grips with this um, and I think Mike actually might be listening to this uh, 
Uh, right now he's very strong and uh, has an excellent attitude towards things and with good professional skilled care and people to give him right advice, uh, he should do well. And with very heavy hearts, the Lions, who are still very much in the playoff hunt, will meet the Vikings tomorrow in Minnesota. They will be wearing number 60 on the back of their helmets to honor their stricken teammate. Well, moving on to other NFL news, the Pittsburgh Steelers will be without star tight end Eric Green for the rest of the season after breaking his right ankle yesterday in practice. We've obtained the practice footage from the Steelers, and you can see that Green catches this pass at the goal line and then falls awkwardly. Green leads the team in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. So the Steelers will be without their best offensive player tomorrow when they host the Oilers at Three Rivers. They may also be without their best defensive player, cornerback Rod Woodson, who has a hamstring injury and is listed as doubtful. Here is a quick look at our lineup tomorrow on NBC, a doubleheader with regional action early. Houston will look to clinch its first Central Division, and a Buffalo win in Foxborough would clinch at least a wild card for the Bills. The big game at 4 o'clock is the Dolphins at Soldier Field against Mike Ditka's 9-2 and two Bears in the pregame. We'll bring you O.J. Simpson's conversation with the always refreshing Ditka. Here's a little bit of that conversation. Coach, is sort of an unusual year. Your team is 9-2, and two, but for some reason, um, no one is really taking you that seriously. Well, I, I think it's right. I don't think we're that good. I really don't. But I think we're 9-2 and two because it, uh, we've played hard enough to get to 9-2. and two. We've had some good breaks. Uh, we're not a Washington Redskin or, you know, a Buffalo Bill team. No way. I mean, they're a better team. We played them, and they proved that. But we're a team that has improved since the beginning of the year in some areas, and that could be significant as we go down the line. But I don't, I don't care if nobody knows we're around. If the better we can stake in, the better off I'll be. Meanwhile, I... They have traditional matchups in college football. The big one in Ann Arbor between Rose Bowl bound Michigan and Ohio State. Michigan winning easily 31 to 3. Another dazzling display by Heisman favorite Desmond Howard. Here in the second quarter, he feels a punt on his own seven yard line, heads down the left sideline, and no one is going to catch him. 93 yards. This is the longest punt return in Michigan history. And Howard reminding us at the end that the Heisman voting is not far off. Well, many people thought that a loss by Ohio State would signal an end to John Cooper's tenure as Buckeye coach. In fact, it was announced before the game that Cooper has been given a three-year contract extension. We'll be back with a look at the future of basketball in the Soviet Union. But as we head to the break, here's a look at some more of the college football scores from around the nation. Back in a minute. Monday on Fresh Prince. While Mumsy and Dads are away, the kids are on their best behavior. Party machine, this is Will. Until Bell Biff DeVoe drops by. For house party hysteria. Then on Blossom, will sexy Susan Anton become the kids' dream mom? Isn't he precious? Whoa! It's the Don't Miss Blossom of the Year on an all-new NBC Monday. Fairfield Buick brings you 2.9% factory financing for up to 48 months on the completely redesigned 92 Buick LeSabre. 92 LeSabre SE is loaded with luxury and the safety of a driver's side airbag and anti-lock brakes for only $19,995. And with your purchase, you'll receive a four-day, three-night Caribbean cruise for two, complete with airfare. Save thousands, receive 2.9% financing, and a cruise for two. It's only at Fairfield Buick. Open nightly on Route 4, Fairfield. New carpet for the holidays? Thank Tim Hogan's and DuPont Stainmaster for all the decorator colors and styles you're looking for. Stainmaster carpet is engineered to resist matting and crushing. And this week, Tim Hogan is featuring a stylish Stainmaster carpet starting at just $11.99 per square yard. And believe it or not, that includes all your panning and installation. In addition to hundreds of styles and thousands of colors, see Stainmaster carpet starting at just $11.99. And there's never a payment due till May of 1992. Think Tim Hogan's for carpet this holiday season. 
Are you ready? Have you heard the news? This weekend, Campbell County Chevrolet is having the largest Northern Kentucky truck and van sale in its history. Folks, it's been in the newspaper, on TV, heard about it on the radio. Well, here's what's happening. Over 150 trucks and vans marked near invoices for this particular sale this coming weekend. Folks, new trucks starting as low as $139 a month. Buy any new truck and we'll throw in one of these free toolmate boxes. Saturday, we're open till 9, Sunday till 6, and I'll see you when you get there. Channel 5, your 24-hour news channel. Welcome back. The current status of the Soviet Olympic basketball team is still uncertain. The political upheaval and economic collapse of this once formidable union is not only taking its toll on the newly independent republics, but on its once powerful basketball program as well. 1917, an entire empire was born with the rise of Lenin, the genesis of communism, a system that would last for eternity, the USSR. We've seen an evolution of a superpower during the last 70 years, and now we face a blank page of history waiting to be written. 1991, the world watched a spectacle, the break of the Union, the fall of the almighty Red, a turning point in world history. The Soviet flag has no further meaning. Each republic can now stand proudly behind its own flag. It is almost certain that Lithuania will send its own team to the Olympics next summer. Estonia and Latvia are still undecided, and the remaining republics have the option to join one Soviet national team, the defending gold medal champs. It is disappointing. We didn't expect these events to happen so fast. With the possible absence of the Baltic states, our team weakens. Our goal is not high anymore. We cannot win. We hope just to qualify. Government just has has no money to spend for sports and for athletes because we had problem with food, we have, we have problem with medicine, people starving and kind of difficult to spend money for any, any sports because we have more, more important problem what's, what's, what's going on in Soviet Union. Alexander Volkov of the Ukraine is one of many Soviet basketball players who choose to play abroad. He is one of the strongest candidates for the Soviet Olympic team, yet even he may not return home to participate. I like to play, but I want to play with good players. I don't want to play with players whose uh, the level uh, low them I, I gonna expect, you know. If they collect good enough, uh, five, six good players are gonna play. If not, I'm sorry, I, I don't know wasting time. Alexander Gomelsky, the former Soviet national coach for over 30 years, is known as the grandfather of Soviet basketball. He still has faith and is hopeful for a united Soviet team. Maybe political little change for future. If economic get up, sport get up too. No questions. I believe, I believe my country because uh, this is great people. Great people, he have chance for future is okay. The future for the young athletes you're watching today is unknown. They are hopeful for newborn stability in their republics and dream to someday represent them in the Olympic Games. We're experiencing the second Russian Revolution and see that rebuilding may go much slower than its collapse, no matter how miraculous the collapse may have been. The athlete's disappointment and the probability of not playing in Barcelona does not even compare to the joy they experienced in August when they were granted their freedom. And the trade-off has instilled hope among the younger Soviet athletes. All right, right now let's go back to Durham and rejoin Don Cricky and Al McGuire. Gentlemen. Thanks, Gail. Blue Devils, as you mentioned, holding to a 12-point lead, 51 to 39. Iron Curtain's down, but there's a battle going on here. These Soviets, they aren't going away. They're playing hard. Well, they play physical, and they, and, and they get at you, but the Duke is a better ball club. It should wear them down this half. The thing I like about Mike and his thoughts this year, if you remember the picture last year after they beat UNLV, the very end of the game, Mike did this. He says, hey, don't celebrate yet. Well, he'd like to get some more of these championships, and he could very well have one this year. He said the key to being a successful coach is to make sure that practice is fun every day. He wants that to be the most important part of their day as far as a fun thing to do, and they practice and play hard. 
but they enjoy it. It's a terrific program to be around as you look at the leading scores. Early leads the way with 11 for the Blue Devils. Grant Hill and Christian Leighton with 10 each. Good to see Christian Leighton ready to start the second half after he injured his foot. He's congratulated by the Soviets. They know who he is and how important he is to his team. Soviets with balanced scoring, but shooting percentages have been the difference, Al. The Blue Devils shooting 54% in the first half. Soviets only 42%. Once they stopped the Soviets from three-point land, then they moved out. The three things that Coach Mike has to watch for this year is handling the national championship. Number two is injuries. And number three is Billy McCaffrey leaving. Now, gotcha. with him leaving, going on the Vanderbilt, that, that's a problem because if Duke has a soft spot, it's hitting from outside. They don't have that true long-range shooters. Pete Gaudet, the man who was on the right of your screen there, he does all the scouting, a very detailed scouting report on every opponent the Blue Devils face. And Mike Bray, a top assistant to Mike Krzyzewski, a 31-year-old. As now Bobby Hurley leads the Blue Devils down the floor. Hawk starts to flash low, and the ball goes to Grant Hill, who dishes to Parks. And Hurley quick to the ball. But his pass Aaron to Grant Hill and the Soviets take it over as Antipop will work in the backcourt. You can start your defense right away. You can't start your offense. The Royal Blue and White that time down tried to get the offense going too quickly. He inched out. Hurley's hands. Chief got inside position. Comes up, puts a block to Christian Layton to get down low in the post. Christian wants the ball. It should get him Hill right now. Grant Hill will defend him. He will jump over that defense as he just did. And he gives Duke again a 14-point lead early in the second half. Mike Krzyzewski and the great John Wooden of UCLA, the only coaches to take teams to the Final Four four or more years in succession. Duke has been there the last four years. Wooden had teams there 11 times in 12 years, and 10 times they won. Uh, that, that will never happen again in <laughs> a different world so. today. But for Mike to go to the Final Four five out of the last six years, it's, um, it, it belongs in Ripley's, believe it or not. Because when I was coaching 60 teams were recruiting, when Coach Wooden and them were coaching maybe 30, today there's 160 teams out there trying to get talent and trying to get to the happy land of the Final Four. Wooden strokes a three-point attempt, rebound to Park. That's what Cherokee likes to do, get a rebound and put it right back up. He normally dunks that one. Those other ACC coaches watching this are saying, oh. man, this now look what Duke has. Cherokee Parks to go with all the rest. Duke will go on into infinity if North Carolina stays in place. There's the head and shoulder fake. Nice block by Parks, all leather. As long as North Carolina stays good because they stay at each other. It's almost like in football in the Big Ten, Don, where it's Ohio State, Michigan. Usually if one team busts out, they get fat, they get lazy. But when two teams are ahead of the pack, they stay on forever. And uh, Coach K, like right now, I met a father, uh, Mr. Newton, today. Next year, they're looking to get this kid out of Canada. That's about 6'9", six, 6'10". Six, and uh, so every year, they bring in two or three ball players. Same way with Dean Smith, the great Dean Smith. And he's outstanding. So that's why they're both good. There's a lot of balance in the ACC as Grant Hill drives and is called for steps. A couple of terrific first-year players a point guard at Georgia Tech, Travis Best, a small guard, sensational player, and he's led Tech into the semifinals of the Big Apple NIT next Wednesday night at Madison Square Garden. Well, he'll make them not forget Kenny Anderson, but it won't hurt as much. Best is from the Chicago area. Oh, Springfield, Illinois, the home of basketball. Exit from Springfield now. Oh, excuse me. I, 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 well, yeah, I thought that part of the country, the, the northeast part of the country, yeah. Now, you said that the ACC, this year definitely the ACC's number one conference, they will put six teams into the NCAA. And Florida State, the new entrance, will end up around fourth in the conference this year and obviously go to the NCAA. Florida State, but with a tremendous second-year player in 
Douglas Edwards, a 6'9", can do it all tight. And the other thing Florida State does, it brings better football to the ACC. Well, I don't like the way Christian Layton looks out there, Tom. He's dragging that foot too much. Everybody's playing for second place in the ACC in football next year. <laughs> so they'll beat on Pat Kennedy this year in basketball. He's their basketball coach down at Florida State. But they should end up around fourth. Georgia Tech, I look for a solid third. We're going to keep the cameras on Christian okay, Leitner. The team physicians feel he's all right. It was just a minor injury, but he has lessened his mobility since straining his right foot. Now the rebound now for the Soviet Union is Gresham. See what happens? The, the Blue Devils fly at you, and we create, it creates a turnover. Here's Leitner's, watch, let's watch him. If a person jumps in the air, always see which foot he lands on, you can tell if the other foot is hurt. No, 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 he's, he's not 100%. Let's see the way he took that step. But nice inside position for lob pass there. There's the lob, called it, coach. Hey, the ever-present chief. Okay, this Cherokee Parks. He just rejected <laughs> We are looking at greatness rising. Well, it was between him and Weber, the kid at Michigan, who's the best freshman in the country, and most people say this kid Parks outstanding. Now here comes the alley loop into Christian. Nice position. He misses the chippy. Watch Parks get position on the weak side. He has a nose for rebounds, a nose for the ball. Weak side to side, away from the ball, and then at the other end, Cherokee with a reject. Great second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is John McGinnis, our director Andy Rosenberg, executive producer Terry O'Neill. We have 16-21 to play in the game, and Duke leads the Soviet Union 57-43, to and they're going to take Leitner out, Al. I thought they should. I don't know. I can't. I'm up here on, in, in the skybox watching this game. But they got a game Monday night against Eastern Carolina. It's very, very important. It's, a, it's an upstate rivalry here, and uh, they don't want to fool. That's why um, uh, Tony uh, Lang isn't playing today, and also that's why John um, um, Hill isn't playing. Yeah, they don't have Hill serious also. injuries, but they have uh, injuries that, uh, that could aggravate them. They want to save them from Monday night. And a curtain opener. Uh-oh, that was goaltending, got away with it. Oh, good call by the referee, Hightower. Good call over there. That was goaltending. We're, we've been witnessing some Michael Jordan type things in this guy, Grant Hill. Yeah, he goes up there now. So that makes it a 14 point spread. See, what happens is the Soviets don't know how to go back door. That's why Carolina is so tough on Duke. Dean Smith's a pro Official. at going back door. We'll be right back after these messages from your local stations. Get ready for the hottest premiere of the year. It ain't no video show. It's the real thing. It's going to be hot. Hot cut tonight. Glenn Black, Alabama, Kenny Rogers, the country's hottest comics in a TV premiere so hot. You're not going to believe it. Hot Cut Tonight. The premiere of Hot Country Night, Sunday night, 7 Central on NBC. This is Mako's Ambassador Paint Service. Just $179. We professionally prepare your car. We chemically clean it, surface sand it, and give it a high-grade oven-baked enamel finish from over 7,000 colors. All backed in writing in over 400 centers coast-to-coast. -coast. Mako's Ambassador Paint Service. The best value for your money. Just $179. If you want high-quality work for this kind of price, you better get Mako. How can it be that an automobile, a mere nine inches larger on the outside, gives you over two feet more room on the inside? Maybe it's the new map. The all-new 1992 Toyota Camry. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. New carpet for the holidays? Thank Tim Hogan's and DuPont Stainmaster for all the decorator colors and styles you're looking for. 
Stainmaster carpet is engineered to resist matting and crushing. And this week, Tim Hogan is featuring a stylish Stainmaster carpet starting at just $11.99 per square yard. And believe it or not, that includes all your panning and installation. In addition to hundreds of styles and thousands of colors, see Stainmaster carpet starting at just $11.99. And there's never a payment due till May of 1992. Think Tim Hogan's for carpet this holiday season. Channel 5 celebrates the season Monday at 8.30. 59-45, Duke by 14 points. As Grant Hill strips the ball oh, from Gresham. Quick. Hey, soccer is a world sport, number one. But within five years, basketball will be the world sport. I thought there were more people playing organized basketball now than even soccer. But I meant for spectators and worldwide, that basketball's there, but still about five years away. Grant Hill, 6'8", 220-pound sophomore. He's packed down 15 pounds of muscle since his freshman season. Played in the Pan American Games this year where we won the bronze. Coach K was interesting his observation yesterday. I said, one thing I, I get a little concerned about is our guys play so much basketball. They never did, the intensity level never stops from them. They love it, but they go right into summer programs that are international competition. Well, they're so intense here because to teach, to teach defense like Duke plays, it, it's constant work every time out. You gotta have a big motor, that means you gotta have a big heart to play defense all the time. You can teach defense, but you can't teach offense. And you can't coach both ways. You have to be committed to defense or offense, one or the other. Through the first four minutes of the second half, Cherokee Parks, the freshman, had four rebounds. That's one more than the Soviet team had. There's an assist. Bob Hurley. And it won't be long before he will be the all-time Duke assist leader. Rebound to Grant Hill. Yeah, he needs 133 this year to become the all-time leader in assist. And the person that has the record right now is Tommy Amaker, the assistant coach. There's his dad, Calvin Hill. Again, a 14-point advantage as Grachev has the ball stripped from him by Grant Hill, but it was last touched by a Blue Devil player. Leitner on the floor despite the foot problem. Igor Grachev is their biggest uh, scorer, but they kind of shut him down. That means they had Ryan Davis on him. Gresham driving hard to the basket. Duke's scattering report had it. He'd almost rather get something on an offensive rebound and put it back than shoot the ball on a pure shot. He just drops his head, then has a drop step, goes to the board, puts it on the glass, then follows up, gets more points on the follow-up on the miss. And the 6'9", Sergei Gresham now leads the Soviets with 13 points. A little too late, Seven. He's so quick, Grant um, Hill. He's so quick. That seven had a foul and uh, potentially that time to stop the automatic layup. It's been a very physical game, but the involvement of basketball, Al, has been more and more physical. It's really become a contact sport. Well, true, but in, in Europe, they, they play physical. They don't, they're, they're not looking to fight. This is the way they play their elbows and their knees. And, and, uh, and sometimes the Americans think that they're trying to hurt them. No, this is the, the way they've always played. Now, the only thing with the Soviet team, these are younger people, their bodies aren't mature. These fellas average 21 years of age for the whole team. Normally, the Soviet team would average somewhere around 28, 29, 30 years of age. Bill Wall of USA Basketball has been traveling with the Soviet team, was talking about how rough they play. One of their players had been out with an injury, and the first thing he did when he went out on the practice floor yesterday, somebody knocked him down, one of his teammates. <laughs> <laughs> They know he's been hurt. <laughs> I like the way they dress Fair for game. practice. They look like the Amboy Dukes from Nick Romano. <laughs> knock on any door. Live fast, die young, have a good-looking corpse, that type of stuff. <laughs> well, they all wear different <laughs> shoes. I mean, they obviously don't have any sneaker deal. And Bill Wall was saying their, their basketball, their game shoes, are also their street shoes. They leave the locker room with these. Well, they're looking so much, they, they enjoy eating so much. They have such a problem. This is serious now. That Bill Wall was telling me that for a McDonald's... Uh, sandwich and soda over in, 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 in Moscow area, you got to pay 30 rubles. So that's prohibitive. 
Grant Hill leads to Hurley. He tries to explode to the basket. The ball is tipped away. And the Soviets come back on the fly. Gorachev gets it over to Gresham. Rebound to freshman Eric Meek. Hurley in a foot race. He's tough to beat. And he draws the foul. Good defense, though, by Alexander Chernoff, who stopped the breakaway layoff. Last two times down, I thought Bob Hurley uh, went back to his freshman days a little bit out of control. Last year, he got the, the control and uh, kind of only sprinted when he had to. Um, but for some reason, the last two times down, he's a little bit out of control. Hurley in the NCAA tournament, they'll hit what many feel is the biggest shot in Duke history. UNLV in that semifinal game was up by five with less than two minutes to go. Hurley came down and stroked a three. It was just like that. Same spot on the floor. Right on cue. There's a mirror for you. Now, I thought the biggest shot in, in Duke history was going to be when Brian Davis hit the, ended up a three-point play and made the score 77-76 against UNLV. You can talk about the championship. You can talk about Kansas. The thing that's going to be known forever is that Duke beat UNLV in the semifinals. If UNLV would have won the championship last year, they would have been rated the number one basketball team ever in college basketball. Krzyzewski well, said that really legitimized our championship. It wouldn't have been the same if somebody else knocked off UNLV on the semi. We had to beat them, particularly after what they did to us the year before. And don't forget with Mike Krzyzewski, at the end of that game, they won the semifinals, the most exciting win of Mike Krzyzewski's life. When the horn went off, he put his palms down and said to the team, settle down, settle down. We haven't, we haven't won it yet. We didn't come here just to beat UNLV. We came here to take home the trophy. Technical foul on the Soviet bench and Vladimir Sinman, their coach. Hurley capitalizes. How could they call it technical? They can't understand what he's saying. They knew. <laughs> they knew. <laughs> <laughs> he, could, he could be cursing. They wouldn't know what he's doing. I'm right? sure he was. <laughs> well, how would they know? Cross was a deduction. He wasn't flattering him, right? When he probably said, I'll spill some borscht on you. <laughs> Looks like the uniforms were dyed in that. Here's a give off from Hurley to Leighton and the Soviets really fight in that lane. They protect the paint. Down court. Oh, surprise. Happy birthday. But if it goes, Igor Kudelin with something to remember his tour of the USA on. And the Soviets are back to within 12. They don't go away. Hurley driving to the basket. No foul. <laughs> Duke players are all bewildered by the lack of whistles, but they're letting them bang at both ends. Here we go to this 360. Inside, complete turnaround, puts it up with his left hand, kisses the glass, shows no emotion. And for the Soviet Union, number 14, Igor Gotchok. Got a dozen points spread here. They're tired. Twelve thirty-five to play. Good spacing. Bad pass by Clark. A little higher, he might have had two. Sometimes those go in, Al. You've seen that. Yeah. If it's possible, it'll happen in basketball. You were talking about talking to the various parents about basketball. That was something you weren't a proponent of, chatting with Oh, I, I couldn't coach today. I couldn't talk to parents. You know what happened to me, Don? When I recruited a kid, I would tell the parents if the kid was coming, I say, now, this is the last time you see me smile for four years, and I never want to talk basketball with you again until your son graduates. I remember one guy I had a game, I'm walking out and the father says to me, and he was a tire salesman, he says to me, you know coach, my son should be playing more. I said, hey, you don't know anything about uh, basketball, I don't know anything about tires, leave me alone. <laughs> but today's a different world. Today you, you, know, you talk and so forth and so on. I, I, I don't do that, or didn't do it. Well, in the big programs, everybody dreams of NBA millions. And even with all the great high school players, only a select few make it to that level. And only a select few keep their money. Nice pass. Breaks it, should be three. You project Leitner as possibly being the first pick overall in the next draft. Yeah, as a senior, I said. The first pick next, uh, ne uh, the next year from the NBA will be Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. And they should both go to the Olympics, maybe also uh, uh, Jimmy Jackson from um, Ohio State. 
Now let's not hear that there's going to be no college players at the Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. We're going to have three. There's going to be Christian Leitner, Shaquille O'Neal, and maybe an alternate with the kid from Ohio State. Soviets having trouble controlling their passes, throw it away, down by 14 to Duke. And the Blue Devils now take a little bit more time setting their offense, and they're working with Grant Hill at the point, giving him some work there. Here's the 6-8 point. Landing position on the floor. 6-8 point guard. Whoa! Reminds you of Magic Johnson. 6-8. We just saw true greatness. Only one other guy you see doing that. Well, he's in Chicago. MJ, Michael. May we please see that again? <laughs> His dad wants to see it again, too. Here's a move into the middle, commits to the air, flies like a condor, finishes it off. Someday his number will be retired, along with Christian Leighton's number. There's four or five other ones up there, the G-Man and um, Danny Ferry and uh, who am I? Dawkins is up there. Art Heyman. Uh, oh, the Grote. Grote, too. Dick Grote, oh, Yes, yeah. to you. Dick Grote, the great baseball player. Dick Grote was outstanding in basketball. That was in the 50s. Lone Ranger and Tonto and Fibber McGee and Molly. The driving slam by Grant Hill extended Duke's lead to 70 to 54 with 11.44 to play in the game. Now Sergei Greshin at the free throw line for the Soviet Union. The Soviets lost by nine points at North Carolina recently. They were beaten by 20 at Kentucky, their only win against Springfield College. He can hit the shots from about 10 feet out, then he just plays off the glass. In 1908, one of the favorites in the great New York to Paris race was a motor car built by Siemens. That was then. This is now. Today, Siemens builds over 700 automotive products, from fuel injectors and microprocessors to halogen headlights. Siemens, creating technologies to keep America and the world moving in the right direction. Siemens, precision thinking. This Christmas, Radio Shack has something for people on the move. With Tandy's line of notebook PCs, we've got the features you need. Quality engineered for rugged travel. And you get the same desktop power you've come to expect in the office. So take a Tandy notebook PC wherever your life takes you. Four different models to choose from. Starting at $5.99. Only at Radio Shack, America's technology store. You're looking for a way to beat those old car blues. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. Now's the right time for year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks, like the versatile Isuzu Trooper LS, priced at up to $1,800 off during the Isuzu for You sale. Info stylist, pick up Trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. The Isuzu for You sale ends soon at your local Isuzu dealer. Put you next to Dan. Now, when life turns up the heat, there's degree antiperspirant. Because it's Ooh. body heat activated, degree turns on extra protection when you really need it. Degree, your body heat turns it on. This Olympic showcase is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. By Visa, official card and traveler's check of the 1992 Olympic Games. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. By Starter, look for the stars and you'll find Starter. And by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, the best hamburgers and a whole lot more. With Al McGuire, this is Don Crickey back at Duke University. Blue Devils leading the Soviet national team 70-56. Our NBC statistician Paul Evans pointing out that Dukes, other than Leitner, hitting 7 of 9 in the second half. Leitner, though, is 0 for 4. Dukes 7 for 13 overall. As Grant Hill, who's done the spectacular day, tips the ball off a Soviet player, and Duke will bring it inbounds. Grant Hill has very long arms. He surprises you. And he doesn't look 6'8", and he's legitimately that size. 
one four offense. Bob will come around the corner. Then feed down low. There it is. That should be two. Soviets finally called for a foul underneath. Well, Laser doesn't on. complain. Foul was on Mike Koloff. Foul was called against the Soviet Union's number eight, Mikhail Mikhailov. He's six foot nine, 225 pounds. Mikhailov. He's their leading rebounder. He runs the court though. Clark in the game. Hurley so quick with the ball and pulls up and strokes the jumper to give Duke a 16-point lead. 18 points for Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley's just a winner. He's been a winner all his life. His younger brother Danny, a top freshman point guard at Seton Hall. Dan the man Hurley. As you see, Hurley with six assists, he will, as we mentioned earlier, be eclipsing Tommy Amaker's Duke record for assists. Hurley with a Duke record for a season, 288 his freshman year. Surpassed his own record the next year. There's Tommy Amaker. He's breaking his record. Tommy Amaker's very pleased that um, he's on the board of USA Basketball. So as, as normal, Dave Gavitt, the president of uh, USA Basketball, always makes good moves. Getting, getting a guy like Tommy Amaker there, that's outstanding. That's the same Dave Gavitt who's the CEO of the NBA's Boston Celtics. Yep, it's the same Dave Gavitt that wanted Coach Mike Krzyzewski to go there in 1990. So last year when Bill McCaffrey left and also Palmer went on to, uh, to uh, Dartmouth, left early, Mike Krzyzewski says, hey, no one told me not to go to talk to Boston about, about leaving. So if a kid wants to leave, that's his prerogative. Uh, Bill McCaffrey, I don't think, made a smart move, but uh, I don't know all the info. Well, I think he wants to play the point, and he wasn't going to do that behind Bobby Hurley's ahead of him. So he's at Vanderbilt sitting out this season, but he was a key part of that national championship team. Gresham just hit that basket down low. He has 19. And they're staying at that 12 number. Hurley passes up the shot, then dishes. Here's Boykney to Leitner. Three seconds in there, too long. Camped, camped out. Camped in the bank. Yep. Cherokee Parks. And the Soviets, on the verge of being blown out, keep hanging in as Leitner sits down. Soviets down by 12. Ten minutes to go in the game. They got a spot up for three-point shots. There's the sharpshooter, but he's not been today. Gorachev. Rebound to Grant Hill. Gorachev. Shooting one for seven today for the Soviets. As Hurley flies to the basket. See what Bobby's doing better this year than he's done this in his last two years. He looks first to shoot rather than pass. That was Grachev stroking it, but he was on the three-point line and only goes for two. And they want him to do that. They want to pick up his shooting and scoring. Always quick to dish. surprised the Soviets haven't gone to a zone to rest themselves a little bit and to make Duke prove themselves from the outside. That is the only question on, on this team into the season. Because I think most of the teams going against the Blue Devils this year will put some type of combination in the zone, especially combinations against um, Christian Leighton. Brian Davis getting some work for the first time in the second half. A Duke starter. Down low to Cherokee Parks. He's rejected. And here comes Antipoff, the man who leads the break. Little touch of the Coos in there with the behind-the-back pass. That's Bob Cousy, the man, the first man to put passing back in the basketball. Then it was Magic and Bird who put it back in in 1979 in Salt Lake City in that big game, the most watched game ever in the history of college basketball. And they're still going strong. Unfortunately, Magic isn't, but Bird is back from the back operation doing well. He was terrific. I saw him a week ago in the garden. 
best competitor ever. It's interesting, they had a sign in the Duke student body that read, Magic, you're still the best, and they were passing it around, holding it up. A lot of Magic Johnson fans down here in Durham as they rebound on to Parks, and he gets it out to Blakeney. Well, what I meant on the best competitor, in my opinion, was Larry Bird. Hurley, a very confident shooter. He has now hit for 22 points to lead all scorers as Gracia fires. And he still can't find the range. They're not regularly. Two for eight. There comes Hurley. Two on two. Watch this. Rebound to Brian Davis. Here's the rough play underneath here. Comes out with the little dynamite. Puts Ball it up. Now it goes back to rough Sydney play again. Sergei See a lot of pushing. His fourth person. One or two head Seventh shoulder fakes there, and there's the foul. Brian Davis to the free throw line. I asked Cherokee Parks, who's in for Duke now, the freshman, what's the big difference between this and high school? He said, in high school, I'd take a turnaround jump shot anytime I wanted to. He said, you do that here without the good fake, and they'll slap it out to half court. He said, I had a habit of putting the ball on the floor down in the paint before I put it up. You put it on the floor here, and they strip you. The rebound, here comes Davis. He is extra fast, but he pulls it up as the Soviets have two men back to defend his break. There's nothing there. Good move. Trick shot by Davis. Never left the floor. Down 14, with a little bit under eight minutes. Need a basket here. Meeks slaps it off the backboard to his teammate. Getting to be a playground game now, up and down. Coach K does not like this. He's saying, set up, let's get our half-court offense. They're going now to a 1-4. Bobby will hit, go around a double pick. What? He hits, go down, Bob. Come around this side, come towards me. Come, come, here's a double pick. Now the man's free on the low post. Reset. Looks over to Coach K, they reset. Here it comes again. They're now going to double low. No, the one floor again. Clock is ticking away. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Down to eight. Early to me. A little too much on it, and the Soviets come running. Isn't that, is a baby layup. Aggression. Well done by the Soviets, and they are again back to within 12. That seems to be the barrier they cannot break. Down by 12 at the half, down by 12 now with 6.35 to play. I don't know if they're spreading out a little bit of work in the clock. I don't think so yet. We'll see this time down. Got the two big freshmen in there. Only recruited two guys last year, Eric Meeks and Chief Parks. Eric e. Parks. Who's had a sensational game. Mobile player, inside, outside. Duke's biggest lead today was 18 points. That was with 4.50 left in the first half. The Blue Devils' lead has stayed between 11 and 16 points since. But Coach K, using his whole bench, he doesn't like to refer to his reserves as bench players. He says everyone's a continuation of our starting five. Everybody we have plays and can play well. Well, this fella here can play well at 235 pounds and hasn't started his four-year career yet. This is an exhibition game. He starts Monday night against Eastern Carolina. Duke Big coaches there, we're talking about his ability to explode off the floor, even better jumper than Leitner or Danny Ferry, who came before him. Well, about 10 days from now, they get a big game in Greensboro against St. John and Louis. And they're loaded. Now the excitement of real arcade basketball is yours in electronic hot shot basketball. Challenge yourself or an opponent in one of two dynamite games. Like who can bury the most hoops in six seconds. 55 points. 
be that, Hotshot. Hotshot is the only game with a motorized moving backboard. Yeah. Jumper, off the rim. There's electronic game sounds and digital scoreboard. Time's running out. Three-pointer at the buzzer. Milton Bradley's electronic Hotshot basketball. When you're hot, you're hot. This castle once had 26 bathrooms. It'd be nice if one of them still worked. Why? What if my diarrhea comes back? Relax. You took my Imodium AD caplets. Just once. I usually take the pink stuff two or three times. Imodium AD is much better. Imodium AD caplets are so effective, they often work in one dose. Instead of dose after dose after dose, like the pink stuff. Ready to go? Well, before the sun set? Imodium AD for diarrhea, the choice for one dose relief. He is the NCAA's all-time winningest coach, guiding over 300 players into the ranks of the NFL. Next Saturday, the legendary Eddie Robinson leads his Grambling State Tigers against the Jaguars of Southern University. It's a Southern tradition as rich as he can buy. The Bayou Classic, next Saturday on NBC. The Duke Blue Devil leads the cheers with 6.22 to play. This is Don Cricky with Al McGuire at Cameron Indoor Stadium, where Duke leads the Soviet Union 78 to 64. Hurley, the leading scorer in the game with 22 for Duke. Grant Hill has 18. Cherokee Parks, 15. Gresham with 21 for the Soviets. Rakshev with 11. Soviets lose the handle. Andrei Fedosov, a 6'10 six, six, player, losing it. And now Grant Hill is back at the point where he did wondrous things the last time he was there, driving the lane and stuffing. Christian Lave is not at 100% with that foot. Didn't I tell you he's not at 100%? <laughs> he just scored the basket. But he, uh, I, I really think that they'll be taking him out. He's limping too much. Christian has shot one for six in this half. Strained his right foot when he was fouled uh, late in the second half, first now, half. Now watch your right foot. Watch when he lands. Now watch him running back. See, see that? See him limping in? But he's a scene. He should be able to tell whether he can play or not to the trainer. A thousand to nothing right here. Ryan Davis on the payoff end. He ignites. Sold out Cameron. 82-64 Duke. An Olympic moment. Brought to you by Panasonic. Helping to train America's Olympic athletes. Montreal, 1976. <laughs> Vasily Alexiev of the Soviet Union attempts a world record 562 pounds in the clean and jerk. He wins his second successive super heavyweight Olympic gold medal. Vasily Alexiev, the strongest man in the world. Super duper duper. Before you buy a compact camcorder, ask. Will its tapes play in my VCR? No. It's got a million answer. Zig zag zoom. Will its tapes play in my VCR? No. What? Now this is the Panasonic Palm Quarter Camcorder. Will its tapes play in my VCR? Yes, it's VHS, so its tapes can play in all VHS recorders. Will its tapes play in my VCR? It will, when it's the Palm Quarter from Panasonic. I've made up my mind. I'm gonna do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. Dave Thomas travels the world over looking for new foods for Wendy's. Bon appétit. Excuse me, is this what I ordered? Tonight we feast, but first we dance! And it's not easy. Boy, I sure could go for a big Dave's Deluxe. It's back. A big quarter pound of fresh beef, cheese, three strips of bacon, sautéed onions. The works only at Wendy's. Which way to El Habib or El Habib? Come in for another big Dave's Deluxe today. Some. 
Back at Duke University, the defending national champion Blue Devils, who returned four starters and four letter winners off the bench, plus a brilliant freshman class, up their lead to 84 to 66. As Hurley leads Grant Hill with the alley up slam. You can only do that if you played together for a number of years. And that was a great junior giving a pass to an outstanding sophomore. Yeah, Grant Hill has 20 points, and he's only shot the ball nine times. He's eight of nine from the field. And that's what would happen if he took 20 shots a game. I said to Coach McGuire during the timeout, he could have made you a Marquette team, and Al said, if I had him come out of the state. If I, if I knew he was in the area, even. Here's the pass from Bobby Hurley. Picture beautiful. This guy. If you're looking for a way to beat those old car blues, your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. It's the right time for year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks. Like the rugged Isuzu pickup, priced at up to $1,500 off during the Isuzu for you sale. Info stylist, pickup trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the Right, Isuzu for you. The Isuzu for you sale ends soon at your local Isuzu dealer. This is Sylvie Daimler, Canadian Olympic speed skater. Over the years, she skated over a hundred thousand miles, done over a million sit-ups and two million leg lifts. Almost all of it before most people get out of bed. But if you think she's tough, wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your Visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. As usual, my brother found a way to get me in trouble. And by the time I got out, our bus was gone. And so was he. That's when I started running. Because no way was I going to let him beat me home. At AT&T, we know every great athlete has been inspired by someone. As a proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team, we salute them all. My brother, he still gets a kick out of seeing me run. We're back and the Blue Devils are breaking. Early and Clark contend for the loose ball. But some of these pileups down there, it's like somebody blew up a grenade underneath. A lot of it well, looks like the game we used to play years ago in the Bronx, uh, Ring Olivia. We used to just dive for things for a hot potato. I was only a kid then. The last 28 years I've lived in Wisconsin. Hey, it's hunting week in Wisconsin. We will, they will uh, clear the herd out of 380,000 deer this week. Cherokee Parks clears out some Soviets and scores again. He has 17. Rebound by Grachev at 6-6. Rejected by Parks. Grachev working hard. Nothing comes easy down low, and Hurley comes out with the ball. Three on two break. Hurley with a dish. Grant Hill goes to the line with 2.28 to play, and Duke in the lead, 86 to 66. Now and then, Duke gets sloppy on offense, but they never get sloppy on defense. Never. And tonight, it's an all-new night of comedy on NBC with all-new episodes of The Golden Girls, Walter and Emily, starring Cloris Leachman and Brian Keith, Empty Nest and Nurses. Then, celebrate Thanksgiving with the show America Loves, Celebrate with Sisters, tonight only on NBC. Grant Hill, the smooth stroker, is now up to 21 points, and you see his field goals, eight of nine, many of them from over the rim. The high percentage shot, he just slams down. Guys, the next Mr. Basketball is going to be the next Mr. Wonderful out there. With <laughs> Superman. Can't pull on Superman's cape. That was a walk. Soviets turn it over, so Coach Krzyzewski, who wanted his team 
to give everybody to get time, but he wanted them to win big if they could, and they're doing that now as they've extended their lead to 88 to 66. They're going to have Cherokee Parks kick the ball into Hurley. I, I picked Cherokee Parks on my all freshman team in the ACC and freshman player of the year. The other guys would be James Forrest from uh, Georgia Tech, Thomas Burroughs from Virginia, Donald Williams from North Carolina, and Travis Best from Georgia Tech. It's my all freshman team. And there's the freshman player of the year right there, right on cue. Nineteen points and nine rebounds for Cherokee Parks. You know what? If his mom and dad don't want me calling him Chief, I'll call him Cherokee. I'll call him anything he wants. Boy, he really ignited the building. One forty to go, and Duke with its biggest lead, ninety to sixty-six. Meek stays in there. Ten pulled him to the ground. That was a foul. Gresham pulled him down. Good call. Don't want these guys getting hurt this late in the game. Vladimir Sinman walking the bench. Not much he can do to stop the Duke onslaught. Gresham's out of here. He is the leading scorer of 21. You see Hill and Hurley with 44 points between them for the Blue Devils. Four minutes ago, it was a 12-point game, 76-64. And since then, Duke has ripped it open with 14 unanswered points. Yeah, blowout time. the foul shot get off the line Eric we line it up if you missed the first one a year ago Duke lost early they were beaten in the championship game of the big apple and the tee by Arkansas then as we mentioned lost their first conference game to Virginia by I think 16 so it didn't start out as a championship year there were some doubts early then Krzyzewski always wants to build for March he said that's when we want to be real good and real healthy well, as I said earlier, the thing that you always worry about is injuries. But the more times you go to a Final Four, the more you learn. The more to just take that game right in front of you. What he says always, let's get on to the next play. No matter how bad things are. You win, you enjoy it for maybe 10, 20 minutes. You lose, you feel bad for 10, 20 minutes. Then get on to the next thing. And that's why Bobby Hurley is such a great player today. In his freshman year, Bobby would sulk and so on. Last year, he didn't sulk after he made a mistake. He gets on to the next play. Forget it and drive on, which is the theme of Dan Reeves and his Denver Broncos this year after their 5-11 season last year. Now they're a divisional leader. Well, well, tomorrow you got Pittsburgh against Houston. Hey, is Houston that good, Don? Houston's tremendous. Did they beat Washington? Well, they played him at RFK and had him beat, except the field goal that was very makeable, a 28-yarder, was missed in overtime, or they would have been the one team that did beat uh, Washington. If they should play him again, though, it would be indoors in Minneapolis in the Super Bowl. That's how the Oilers like it. Artificial turf and a roof on it. Thirty-six seconds left in the game. Duke has it won, 90 to 68. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Producer of today's game, John McGinnis. Director, Andy Rosenberg. Technical director, Phil Doucette. Associate director, Doug Grabert. Production associate, Ed Fibeshoff. Technical manager, Pete Scamahorn. And production manager, Lisa Stock. And we thank them all and our excellent NBC technicians. As it is now, just about over, the Soviets try for one more, but far too little and much too late in this one as Duke leads it 90-68 to 68 with four seconds to go. Don, it's going to be an exciting year this year. Look already, Indiana lost, was picked by, by number two. Kentucky lost at home last night, so it looked like it's going to be a great year. Who's going to end up, what's the final four going to be in Minneapolis in the first week of April? I would say Duke. 
Arizona, Arkansas, and IU, Indiana. St. John's threatened them. I'll tell you, it's going to be terrific. And Arizona terrific. threatened them. Where did you see Ohio State? They're really going to be good. Well, I think the class of the Big Ten is going to be it Bobby is, Knight. Knight. It is Indiana. But those freshmen come out from Michigan, but it's a, a story still to be told as that will do it. Duke wins it 90-70 to 70 for Al McGuire. This is Don Tricky. Glad you could be with us. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. Come fly the friendly skies. The preceding has been a presentation of NBC Sports, network of the games of the 25th Olympiad. Sunday, it's a hot country night when the Torkelsons have Thanksgiving. And welcome Patty Duke for a family reunion. Dad, it's been a long time. At 7, 6 Central, NBC Sunday. Hi, I'm Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay. I'm hosting Saturday Night Live. The Macaulinator. With musical guest Tin Machine. The Tin Machine. Or Ramma. New carpet for the holidays? Think Tim Hogan's and DuPont Stainmaster for all the decorator colors and styles you're looking for. Stainmaster carpet is engineered to resist matting and crushing. And this week, Tim Hogan is featuring a stylish Stainmaster carpet starting at just $11.99 per square yard. And believe it or not, that includes all your panning and installation. In addition to hundreds of styles and thousands of colors, see Stainmaster carpet starting at just $11.99. And there's never a payment due till May of 1992. Think Tim Hogan's for carpet this holiday season. What I like about the sales people at Performance is that you do not have to play the games or the gimmicks that you do at other dealerships. Now that's Performance. Right now, Performance Honda East and Performance Honda Mitsubishi have the Midwest's largest selection of 92 Accords at the lowest price, only $179 a month. That's right, drive a new Performance Honda Accord for just $179 a month. So when price counts, count on Performance Honda Mitsubishi on Route 4 in Fairfield and Performance Honda East on Beachmart at I-275. News Channel 5, your 24-hour news channel with Felicia Ferguson, Curtis Fuller, Richard McCullough's weather, and George Vogel with sports. Now, News Channel 5. Good evening. Some scary moments this morning after a chemical leak at a Sharonville hotel. Nine people were rushed to area hospitals when a large amount of chlorine leaked into the hotel's restaurant. The leak was at the Sharonville Residence Inn. Rescue units were called to the scene after several people at the restaurant complained about a strange odor and started getting sick. The fire department says the whole thing stemmed from a leaking hot tub. At the hot tub, it was outside. They had did a test on their chlorine, and they stated that the chlorine level was too high, so they were draining the water out of the hot tub to get the chlorine level down. Somewhere in the system, the chlorine backed up into the into the system and then the fumes went inside the building. Rescue units say the leak has been contained. All nine people taken to the hospital were treated and released. Other news now. Ten people were rescued from a burning building in Lower Price Hill early this morning. It happened in an apartment building right near the corner of State and Guest. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused the fire. They'll be back at the scene Monday. None of the residents suffered injuries, but two firefighters were slightly hurt. Damage is set at six thousand dollars another fire this one at a tire store on Gilbert Avenue it happened in the 2400 block of Gilbert at Dennis tire shop That burning rubber from the tires caused a lot of thick smoke in the area but fortunately firefighters got things under control rather quickly now damage is listed at this fire at fifty thousand dollars the cause is still undetermined Columbus police are still searching for clues tonight in a horrifying execution-style murder. Police say the bodies of 23-year-old Laura Williams and 18-year-old Stephen Fawn were found crouched together near a dumpster early this morning. Apparently, the two were taken to the back of the old country buffet restaurant where they worked, then shot to death. Fawn's father went to check on his son when he didn't come home last night and discovered the bodies. Police say they have no suspects and no motives. Well, it's being called a National Day of Rescue by any abortion activists around the country. The day was marked by protests and the blocking of abortion clinics in 60 cities here at home.